Thank you so much, all of you, to join us today on Sunday morning. Today we have uh, Rupal Dukanya with us. She is an economics graduate from LSR and a fellow member of IFOA. Currently, she is working uh, with Accenture as a team lead and have more than four years of work experience in general insurance, uh, insurance industry. She has exposure of both reserving and pricing team. Today, she will be discussing about her journey to uh, becoming a qualified actuary and what were the different moments of successes and failures for her, um, how she got her first job, and all her life experiences she'll be sharing with us today uh, in this one hour of session. Thank you so much, Rupal, for joining us. Um, let us start. You can start with your uh, talk session. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Shivangi, for the introduction. And I'm sorry, guys, I know it's difficult to wake up uh, in the winter. So uh, just bear with me for an hour. Um, so hi, um, I'm an economics graduate from LSR, and I recently cleared my last exam from IFOA. Um, if I start talking about my journey, it's a pretty interesting one as to why I chose actuarial and uh, how I reached so far. So my parents uh, had uh, sent me to Delhi in 11th to pursue for uh, IIT coaching. I was taking IIT coaching and uh, by the end of class 11th, I realized that physics is not my forte. So um, let me tell you, it, it takes a lot of courage to... Uh, call back your parents and say that, you know, I don't want to do something that you sent me out for. So I had to start looking for alternative uh, options and I started looking for more courses. So I came across um, actuarial science. I read a little more about its course structure, uh, what the career opportunities are. And uh, back then what fascinated me was uh, you can keep studying along with your job. Uh, and that just helps you to upskill yourself on a daily basis. Um, along with that, I also started looking for uh, college degrees that would align with the actuarial course. So I thought uh, maybe economics honors would be the right choice. And uh, I obviously wanted to do my economics honors from a good college. So I started focusing on my class 12th board exams. And um, that's how I got into LSR, and that's how my journey of actuarial uh, began in 2016. Um, so in LSR, uh, honestly, it's not very easy to manage both uh, exams, uh, actuarial exams and college. Since the attendance was very strict, we had uh, regular class tests and uh, there was a lot of pressure from college also. Like I, I hear my friends who were in Xavier's, they would go to college for four hours, especially boys, they go to college from six to 10. So they have a lot of time during the day to study and to do other things. But eventually I found the right schedule that worked for me. I would ensure that I sit with my books, I study for at least two, three hours every day. And on the weekends, I would have my coaching. Then uh, we would have regular doubt classes. So I would always make sure that I go prepared for my classes and not uh, leave everything for the end moment. Um, and in Delhi University, it's very common to do internships during your uh, summer holidays so i also uh, did an actual internship during my college time which was in calcutta itself uh, back then obviously you don't have a choice to uh, as to whether you want to intern in a life insurance company or a general insurance company because most of us don't even know about our interests um, but i always was more inclined towards the statistics subject than ct5 or ct1 so luckily i i got an opportunity to intern with a indian general insurance company and when i was interning i it was just so much fun because I was able to see the direct application of what we were reading in papers um, and how we are actually using runoff triangles to build reserves and take uh, company decisions. So after that internship, I was more eager to start my corporate career and to learn. But 
that internship uh, made me realize that i actually want to go into general insurance and not life insurance so i would suggest that college is the time when you explore yourself when you can know about your interests so do internships read do courses so that you know what you like um and uh, yeah so i had uh, six papers by the end of my college and i got placed uh, through college placements uh, in aig but uh, aig did not particularly come for an actual opportunity they came for uh, it was a very open role and the role, uh, the team would be decided based on certain tests and discussions post we joined the company so it was a risk that i was taking if i would uh, get the actual team or if i would get the general insurance team but i had faith in myself i uh, joined aig and in those two months of training i um, i proved myself there were tests i studied for those tests so that i get the desired team and then um, there was an interview uh to get into the actual team which was basically focused on the papers the internship that i did so um that's how i got my first job in aig in the general insurance company um yeah but you know like back then it was not so easy to get into an actual uh, job right after college it would require a lot more uh, Uh, connecting with people looking out but now there are companies which are giving opportunities there are openings for interns as freshers so i would suggest that apply from 4 to 5 months before your college is going to end don't wait till the college uh, gets over and then you'll start looking for it then you'll actually be late uh, compared to your peers um with job it takes the first 6 months it takes some time to figure out how to balance your work and your study because when you are passing out from college you have just been studying till now either for college exams or for actual exams but with job work is work becomes your priority you have work commitments you cannot say that oh, Oh, I have my exam in two weeks, and I need a holiday. No, it doesn't work like that. So, in corporate, you have to keep buffer time for your for your studies. You can't leave things for the end moment. And uh, first diet when I was appearing, it was a little tough. But every company has a actual development program where they um, give study leaves. Uh, they uh, reimburse your exam fees they reimburse for your study material so it's not like company companies also do want you to clear exams and uh, generally companies are very supportive your managers will push you to give exams so i won't say that it's tough and in the journey when you're in a corporate everybody around you is giving papers so you won't feel like you're the only one who's hustling everybody is studying everybody is motivating each other so it's easy after 6 months i started enjoying the process and it was nice but and like i cleared rest of my exams with job so um obviously it's doable 2 3 hours of study is manageable even with office i would say and uh, yeah i think one mantra that really helped me throughout my career is consistency i uh, i would study every day there was a, you can take a break once in a while you can skip a day but don't make it a habit because then you will feel like oh aaj nahi padna aaj i'm tired you will start giving yourself excuses and it doesn't work like that if you study for 2 3 hours you won't be stressed before your exam you will be totally done with your syllabus you can practice papers so be consistent with your studies study every day yeah i think that's all have uh, all i have to say and for uh, students who are starting out now it may seem like a long journey but trust me you'll get there if we if i could get there uh, i think all of you could get there so just be focused just be consistent uh, yeah
Thank you, Rupal. Uh, now she'll be talking about PPD and CPD requirements, which are some requirements as a uh, to be a qualified actually we have to complete. So uh, just 10 minutes, she'll be talking about uh, how we can as students uh, and as working professionals, what we have to do for PPD and CPD requirements. Um, yeah. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, it's visible. Um, okay, so a PPD a requirement is uh, based on the practical work experience and it applies to all IFL students who start working and it is mandatory to sit exams and maintain your student membership. If you miss a PPD deadline, then you would probably not be able to sit for your exam uh, in the next diet. So make sure that you complete your PPD requirements. Um, so PPD is basically to demonstrate the application of what we're studying in the paper in, in the work areas. It also reflects on the quality of work that we are doing at our workplace. And it it is also a way of assessing the continuous development of skills that we are uh, doing at our workplace. And there are several categories of PPD um, through which we can log. Uh, so we have effective communication, problem solving, and decision making, professionalism. And within these cat categories, there are subcategories. So when you go into the IFO website to log your PPD for the current cycle, you can see the different subcategories and you can select that and accordingly fill your PPD for that particular year. Now, um, in PPD, um, when you log your PPD, you have to give an activity description, which is basically if you have selected a subcategory, you have to describe what activity you're talking about. For example, if I'm talking about giving a presentation to my uh, US stakeholders, so I have to describe what presentation I give. Then I have to give the learning outcome. So if I gave the presentation, so there it could be a non-technical audience so i have to give the learning outcome from that that i knew that it was a tech non-technical audience so i i uh, did not use uh, too many actual jargons or uh, this is how i presented because they did not have that knowledge this is how i presented my conclusion that's uh that's what you do do in your learning outcome and uh, make sure that you explain your learning outcome initially um I did not know that we have to explain in detail, but uh, right now it's a requirement that you have to write minimum of 600 words in learning outcome. And then um, you have to give the activity date when um, you gave the presentation in this example. And there's an option to select if you discussed it with your supervisor, which is if you've discussed it with your manager. Um, so there are certain mandatory uh, PPD requirements to apply for associateship or fellowship. And these are the subcategories that we just saw above. Um, I will share the PPT uh, with Shivangi. You all can look, have a look at it uh, later. So uh, for students who have joined before 2nd January 2019, you need to have minimum of 12 months of work experience and uh, 10 credits to qualify as an associate and two hours of uh, formal learning activity. And for fellow, you should have 36 months and uh, 20 credits minimum. Whereas for students who have uh, joined after 2nd January 2019, the uh, minimum criteria for associates have been increased to 24 months and the minimum number of credits is 15. And uh, now uh, for students joining after 2nd January 2019, it's mandatory to take your associateship first and then after a year, you can apply for your fellowship. Like for us, it was not mandatory to take our associateship. We could directly apply for fellowship. Um, so there's an application that we need to submit when we apply for associateship or fellowship. Uh, for associates, we, we, uh, we must have uh, the CS, CM, CB, and the CP papers. And uh, 
complete the professional skills stage one and stage two. Stage one is uh, the one uh, which we have to complete before we sit for the CB3 exam. And stage two uh, is the one that we have to complete between fourth and sixth year of anniversary with IFOA and complete all the PPD requirements for associate as it was detailed above. For fellow, um, the, you have to complete the SP and the essay papers along with the requirements for associateship above. So um, what is CPD? CPD is something that you have to do once you are an associate or a fellow member of IFOA. And um, it involves learning, which is relevant to the actual work or professional development. And it should have a definitive learning outcome. Um, and the CPD requirements, you you necessarily don't have to uh, document it with IFA, but you should always have a record with yourself in case uh, they uh, they just select people randomly for audit. So you should have it recorded somewhere so that you can discuss it with them when they reach out to you. Yeah, I think that's all about PPD and CPD, and you can ask me any questions in the Q&A round uh, about um... this. OK, so Rupal, can you also uh, tell us more about how did you uh, get your first job? And can you share your uh, CV with us um, so that all the students can see and understand what we need? Uh, and just talk about how to make a CV being a gra uh, college student. Yeah, sure. Um, let me just open my CV. Um, OK, um, so um, I got my first job um, through college placement, and it was during the last semester of my college. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I, I started uh, my actual journey with AIG. And uh, it did not come for an actual role, but I knew that AIG has an actual department. So when I was sitting for interviews, I showed my interest and uh, I was a science student, so I did not have knowledge of other departments such as accounts or tax. So I, I did mention to them that I'm interested in the actual department and uh, that I think uh, they they did have roles open and that's why they um, selected me once um, i got selected we had a uh, two months of classroom training uh, the, uh, it and uh, the topics were varying between uh, the basics of insurance to accounting principles to gap to stat and there were regular tests that we had so we were a group of 29 to 30 people from three four colleges of delhi university and in those uh, those tests were, would actually determine if i would get through the team i wanted and uh, luckily i i since i had done an actual internship and uh, I could perform well on the tests. I got through the general insurance actuarial team uh, with AIG. And uh, uh, yeah, that's how I started my corporate career. And uh, so as a college student, if I talk about the CV, uh, I think CV is something that you use to sell yourself to the company, right? You want you want to highlight the things which are your strength, which are your strong points. And it should not be more than one page for a fresher because you managers who are sitting at the other end, they are going through hundreds of CVs and they don't have time to read through the CVs. So make sure to use keywords like if you've done any software if you've done courses on any software like sql r python just mention that and uh, let me tell you that we are living in a world of automation everybody wants these software skills so i would recommend take these courses and i think in the current cur curriculum ifa already has um, r and excel but also try to learn python sql it is always going to help you in your job and um, this is my cv as you can see you should not have too much crammed into one page 
just make sure you are highlighting the important details like um your educational qualification is a must the papers you've cleared then um, i have work experience in my cv but uh, if you have any internship experience do mention that what kind of work you did in your internship how long it was so when you're applying for a job as a fresher if you have an internship it's definitely going to help because uh, it shows that you have some exposure um, working in a team and uh, like it just shows that you were active in your college you were just not into studies so make sure you're part of extracurricular activities as well your college life should not be only about exams and studies and then you can mention any awards or academic achievements you've had mention about your abilities and strength where you can talk about the software knowledges that you have then um uh, some companies actually look for a uh, position of responsibilities that you've held in college or if you've done any social activity so mention highlight all the good parts that you want the other person to know Wh whatever will sell you the best mention that in your uh, one page cv all right so um now let us ask a few questions so we have prepared a questionnaire for you rupal um sure. you can uh, if you want you can stop sharing yeah okay so tell me firstly how it feels to become a qualified actuary and your journey so what is the feeling to become a qualified actuary how it feels uh um, the best feeling is not to think about uh, the next attempt when to start studying uh, which exam to sit so that's a very big relief um, but i think i started enjoying the journey so much of just studying and upskilling myself on a daily basis i have this question what next what next can i do to uh, just upskill myself to do something at the side so uh, that's still something i'm figuring out but it it has been a long journey um there were some lows there were some highs so it's not easy you have to be motivated throughout to reach so far um, there'll be times when you look at your friends who are not doing actuarial where you see they are going out they are going on trips why can't i do this but trust me these sacrifices are going to be worth it once uh, you clear all your exams and it's a very prestigious uh, career option let me tell you you have so many international opportunities you have so many opportunities in india so don't look at others just know what's your aim focus on that and it it really feels good when you complete all those papers when you're working when you're earning for yourself so just just live your moment and study it's okay like if it's just matter of 4 5 years and if you are focused and uh, if you continue working hard you'll reach where you want to reach right so um, you have talked about moments of failure and successes so how what uh, can you talk about two moments when you felt like given giving up but uh, you did not so can you talk uh, about that with us um honestly there was never a moment where i felt like uh, i want to give up or i don't want to uh, complete my uh, papers but sometimes uh, there were two moments when it was a little difficult for me to keep myself motivated uh, one was when um, Uh, the first attempt when i started working and that was the time when i was giving ct8 and praveen sir was of great help during that time uh, uh that time i found it really difficult to uh, sit and study after office because after 8 9 hours you feel very drained and you don't have the energy to sit and practice and to study so that was the time when i felt like how am i going to clear rest of my papers this is not easy but uh, there are study leaves uh, that you get from your organization and uh, yeah like i i found my way of either studying at night or study in the morning so that i i still maintain that rule of studying 
every day and not just study on the weekends because you know it's very easy once you start working people think oh i'm very tired today i will do it on my study leave or on the weekend it doesn't work like that and when you're in a corporate you never know what can come your way and you can never say no to a work so it's always better to have some buffer time to study regularly and uh, i am honestly not a person who can study in the last one 1.5 months i i like my syllabus being completed 15 days before the exam so that i have enough time to revise and uh, that has actually helped me i i never leave things for the end moment and uh, the second time was when i failed my first paper and the only paper of actual science and i was like oh i did not know that okay uh, what does failure feel like but uh, that actually helped me to be more motivated for the two three papers that i had left and i could uh, clear all of them in the first attempt i i realized what uh, what did not work for me that was the first theory paper i gave from ifo and the requirements for higher papers are a little different so i analyzed myself what was not working for me how should i change my approach and uh, yeah i could clear that exam and i could clear rest of the higher sp and sa papers in my first attempt okay so that's great now uh, so you have already covered a lot of different traits but what traits should one have to become a qualified actually fia um i would again say it's consistency if right. you are consistent with your study and i think this is one thing that um, praveen sir also focuses on a lot that uh, actual science is uh, not very tough but if you're consistent in a particular diet you can clear your exams in the first attempt and it does require a certain amount of hard work so don't shy away from doing that hard work this is the time when you can make your career um and uh, yeah give it your all to relax in your late 40s and 50s because you'll have done all your hard work in your early 20s right so um which paper was most difficult according to you and why um so i think ct8 for me was a little tough because of the reason that this was the first ct paper i was giving along with my job and i i couldn't practice as much as i would have liked to practice because of lack of time um and the second one would be cp1 because that was again the next huge paper i gave and that was the theoretical paper it was it is very different from the ct papers that uh, i had been giving but uh, there's a different approach that you need to follow with cp in the sp series uh, when compared to the ct series but i think for all of these papers if you do past papers if you know well what's there in the core reading you're good to go right so um can you talk about your first interview uh, your first job you've already talked uh, some of it and how was the first 6 months in your first job and how did your first interview go and how one a student can actually prepare for the inter actual interviews um so for for first interview i would uh, personally my first interview it was not uh, actual based when i got through the company it was generic more uh, based on my economics honors and what i did through my college uh, all of that but when i was transitioning from the training period to the actual team then there was a interview and it was based on the papers that i had cleared um, and uh, my the work that i had done during my internship so um, so just make sure if you're doing any internships you're not doing it for the sake of it understand what you've been working on what's the impact of it uh, to the company and with actual papers also don't study just to clear the exams have your concepts clear very clear because when you go for an interview they are not going to ask you a formula they will you choose a concept and they are going to build upon it and ask you a very practical question so if you don't have your concepts clear 
you you're going to get stuck there and uh, in reality formulas can be googled what actually matters is how well you can apply the formulas to a real life problem so for students who are going to sit for interviews in the coming few months or in the coming years i would suggest that uh, have your basics cleared from the papers that you've cleared and uh, if you've done internships i would highly recommend you to do internships so that you explore yourself you understand uh, what you like what you don't like and third thing i would say that um, do courses apart from actuarial and your college uh, do courses for softwares and be involved in extracurricular activities also if for example if you have some um, fest happening in your college or economics fest or something take part in that take part in competitions that just helps you to grow yourself uh, grow your personality which is also important you should not be only into studies 24/7 right so you have talked about some soft uh, software skills what are the general uh, software skills that a college students needs to do um and that is actively used in the actual domain um so i think uh, r sql python these are the three soft and vba these are three to four software um softwares that are being used in the actual field and i think for the life side um, there are profit and other stuff but you can always learn those things with the job but uh, it's advisable to uh, do courses for python r sql vba before your college so that you have an upper hand compared to others who have not done these courses because these skills are required even if you're not using it if your team is not using it directly but if you have the knowledge of this and if you want the data from some database you can quickly type a code and get the data you can complete the work which would probably require 3 days in one day and that's how you will be able to perform better in your job that's how you will be able to be recognized in your job you don't want to be average wherever you go right you want to be extraordinary you want that you do good for yourself so try to have these additional skills that is going to help you in your career and uh, with college trust me college is the time when you have so much time to yourself you will never have so much time to yourself in future so uh, invest your time into building these skills it's definitely going to help you in future right so very well said um now the next uh, thing uh, let tell us about tell us something about the kind of work that you do uh, in the general insurance domain and um like talk about more that what the students are ex can expect once they move to the uh, to their jobs so um i i started my journey with a reserving team where i was involved in setting the assumptions like um, you might have heard about development factors in ct6 or run off triangles so those are the very basic concepts that we study but applying it at a bigger level for a line of business like marine or aerospace choosing the loss uh, selecting the loss ratio so i was involved with that part where we are looking at how much reserves we should have so that the company is able to pay claims when uh, there are claims from the insurers then there is the pricing side so i'm working in the pricing team currently there are pricing side of things where we price um the policies what premium we should take from the customers for the uh, insurance that we are providing uh, so i have i worked on the reserving side now i'm looking at things from the other side where uh, we look at how the market is working what the competition is like how much premium should we charge to get the required market share um yeah and it, i'm uh, talking about it at a very high level but uh, there are other details that we look into there are reporting requirements once you do reserving or pricing you have to file your rates that you want to use these rates for your policies with the regulator and uh, 
for students who are going to apply for jobs so there are three kinds of companies i would say um, uh, you can start your career with one is the consulting companies like ey kpmg accenture then you have core companies which is the which is the indian companies like hdfc or go tata aia then you have kpos which is key process outsource or manage service units um, like wns or mercer and each kind of company has its own pros and cons so consulting is usually very fast paced um, and uh, like you most of the time you either work with a stakeholder who is based out of india or some other client who are in india but with core company the work that you do you can see it in the indian market because uh, the products that you're working in will get launched in india so that's an advantage of working in a core company and uh, there are different fields um, in which you can start your journey so there is general insurance life insurance health insurance pensions investments and uh, from paper some people know while giving papers uh, which area interests them most more some people don't know about it and they probably start with one um, they probably start with one uh, field and then they realize oh uh, this is not what they like and they switch in another two years to either general insurance and life insurance so it's okay if you don't know your interest area but uh, if you think uh, even 50% that oh this subject interested me more i would suggest probably start with that so that you can explore that uh, okay i like this maybe i want to continue with this so um can you talk about how to maintain work and study balance because i think that is very important and we have some students over here who have just started working um and the first 6 months is very difficult to adjust uh, if you are moving to some other city then again it's all the more difficult so how to adjust uh, with so much work pressure and to maintain the study so how to maintain that balance so i think every organization in this field has a actual development program where they do give you study leaves um, and they do support you to sit for exams and clear exams but as i said um, it's not always easy to get study leaves there might be some urgent work project for which you might have to cancel your study leave so that is why it's it's always better to plan your exam in advance for example for the april diet you could probably start studying from december so that you have 4 to 5 months you could aim to complete your syllabus well before and uh, keep enough time for revision so that you constantly don't have to think that oh i have just two months left and i have to cover so much so plan in advance and uh, some people are able to study before they leave for office because they think uh, uh, that's when they feel the most uh, active so pick a time study for 2 hours in the morning then leave for office if you study at night no matter what however tired you are study for an hour if you get into the habit of skipping a day then you can always find excuses oh today i had a long day or today i'm too tired don't don't give yourself excuses and personally for me when i would feel like oh aaj nahi padhna i would just say that uh, rupal what if you don't clear your exam just because of skipping this day so why not just do it push yourself and you'll clear it in this attempt why do you want to study the entire thing once again so keep yourself motivated push yourself don't give yourself excuses if you study for 3 months 4 months for one particular diet you'll clear it and you'll be able to complete your actual journey sooner and then you can have all the fun you want or go wherever you want so uh, just start in advance i would say some people in college i think leave it for last one month 1.5 months that i will i will study and i will complete my syllabus don't do that with jobs 
give yourself three, four months for a paper, practice enough. Uh, you might not be able to practice as much as you did in college, but that's okay. Jitna ho raha hai, utna karo and uh, study every day. That's all I would say. Right. So uh, just maybe one or two more questions. Um, very important and actual journeys, I think, to deal with failures because we have 13 papers. Earlier, we used to have 15 papers. So um, it obviously, we might fail a few. Right. So how to deal with failures and how to overcome it and how to again start studying for the same paper? Um, so personally, I. I'm, I don't take success to my head or I don't let failure affect me too much. Obviously, when you fail a paper, it does affect you for two, three days and you feel bad as to why you did not clear because every attempt you give your 100% and you push your limits to clear it. But after those two, three days, you should sit with the marking schedule you should sit with your paper the question paper probably take help of a colleague who gave the same paper or, or who cleared the exam last diet and analyze what went wrong for you what did not work for you and sometimes with theory papers uh, more you do everything right but sometimes it's not in your hand because there are two different markers checking your paper and it's theoretical you don't they some one marker might find that oh your answers are very good and they will give you a pass mark and the other marker might feel that no my answers are not good and it's very common trust me it's very common so you just need to know that in that case you need to know that you did everything you could all you can do is practice more uh, give mock exams so that you're better prepared for the next attempt and uh, for the uh, CT series and the CP series, I would say that it does feel bad when you fail an exam. But after two, three days, sit with your paper, analyze what went wrong for you and just start studying. Start making notes of which areas you should focus on so that uh, you score better. And with Excel and R, uh, I haven't appeared for exams in that pattern, but that is also an important part that has 30% weightage. So some people just focus on the theory paper and not work too much for the practical paper. Don't do that. Maintain a balance. You have to clear the paper in total. So just have a plan. Don't having a plan is definitely going to help you clear your exams in the first attempt hopefully right so uh, can we talk about like what is the current uh, scenario job scenario for actual students and how does the salary and increments work in the current scenario we've already talked about the three different companies hiring actual students so what is the current status and um, how can one apply for their first job if there are no college placements available um so f uh, currently i would say that the job market requires freshers and interns you guys do have opportunities in the market just upskill yourself with software clear papers uh, in college and uh, there are many companies who are hiring interns to apply for jobs if you if you don't have college placement there are two three ways you can constantly be updated with the posts on linkedin that uh, recruitment companies post uh, make a note make a list of the companies that are hiring make your cv have your cv made uh, if you're a third year student you should all already have your cv so that if you see any opening you can just straight away apply for it and uh, have a brief introduction written so when you send your cv to a recruitment company again they are getting so many cvs if you have a brief introduction hi highlighting uh, what course you did how many papers you have if you have done any internships they will not have to take the effort to go through your cv that is the first thing that's going to help you stand out right so that's one way you can reach out to your seniors or uh, just random people on LinkedIn, if you're interested in some company, if you're interested in a consulting company, look for people who are working in those companies, reach out to them. Again, a tip over here, when you reach out to people on LinkedIn, some people just send a hi. And uh, 
if you are sending a hi to a person who has who's been working in corporate they are not sitting there to chat with you right you have to give a brief introduction that hi i am so 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 and so and i have uh, i have so many papers cleared i'm interested in this company can you tell, let me know more about the company so do that effort from your end nobody is going to help you if you don't help yourself um you yeah so you can connect with people on linkedin then uh, you can visit the portals of some companies uh, they have job openings in their portal you can register in their portals so that you keep getting updates when they have openings yeah and if you're in third year i would probably suggest that start applying start looking for jobs from february so that you can start working right after college if you wait for your college to end it's probably late to start looking for jobs because there are already people who would have got their first job when they are in college so um, be active to get your first job it's not going to come to you you have to go and get it um yeah right so rupal how was your experience with us with actuators educational institute just two three lines on that um so i did ct8 with praveen sir and uh, i my job was starting in august and i had like roughly two months when i was in calcutta and uh, i joined praveen sir and he was so sweet um, i had to fly back to delhi and he actually gave me those four five extra classes individually so that i could cover up the syllabus and when i was in delhi and if i had any doubts um he helped me in fact shivangi also helped me i think she was also appearing for cta at the same time so it's a very supportive team uh, they will always and no and they just don't um, teach you they always motivate you also they guide you so well they motivate you so well i remember when it was becoming tough for me for that last month uh, when uh, during the exam and i told praveen sir i am not feeling confident he did not once uh, make me feel like oh no your preparation is not good enough he in fact motivated me that you've done well you you have attended the classes you've practiced papers you will do it so that is the kind of push that you want from your mentor right and praveen sir is an amazing mentor and uh, guys do take his advices go ask him questions i'm sure he's going to help you guys um, achieve things in your career so in short uh, i really want to thank actuators for uh, helping me clear ct8 if i did not clear ct8 that was the last attempt uh, before the curriculum change then i would have to read the new uh, curriculum so thank you so much praveen sir thank you rupal uh, so sweet of you so okay so we have some questions in the chat box how important college exams are uh, to get a job i think this is something which all the students have back in their mind that what should be the uh, cgpa that we should be ideal cgpa as a student that we should get to get into a actual job um so obviously you can't um have a cgpa of 5 or 6 and expect to get a job uh, oh, and i personally feel that uh, doing well in your college exams is not tough if you are doing a course like actuarial science and if you plan it well and uh, study for a week or 10 days you can do well in your uh, college exams and definitely have your cgpa maintained above 7 7.5 if you are above the 8 range it's just an added benefit that shows how you could balance both and in your first interview you people will actually look at how well you were able to balance your college and actuarial jobs because then you are expected to balance work and uh, actuarial exams which is tougher than managing college and um, actuarial exams so uh, i would say that don't completely ignore your college exams study for them and if you have the right plan you can uh, all of you are smart if you're doing actuarial science so uh, study for 10 days and i'm sure you can get above 7.5 cgpa right so i think we don't have more questions in the chat box how to get um, so one question is how to get an internship related to actuaries and in college time because i think it's a little difficult uh, 
companies generally don't hire um, undergrad students. Um, mm. So how to if if there are any and how one student can get that? Um, it is true that it is not uh, easy to get an actual internship through college uh, uh, during college, but uh, reach out to seniors, maybe get in touch with HRs. Sometimes they do hire uh, freshers. In fact, in Accenture also, I think a couple of years back before COVID, we did have summer interns. So. Uh, just be aware of the openings start uh, being active on linkedin so that you know about the openings that are there and networking is definitely going to help you in this field because we are a small group of people everybody knows everybody you'll realize it sooner or later so uh, network well and uh, yeah seek out for help people are very helpful in this industry seek out for help show your interest and i'm sure uh, if there are uh, opportunities available for a month or two you can get it right so um generally in aptitude tests that we have before we uh, sit for the in uh, one-to-one -one interview so what one should prepare in the aptitude tests um so it's very general like um you remember how we had the lrdi pa part in a sets it's kind of similar to that but if you uh, if you look at some of the cat books you can look at the logical reasoning di part and you don't really have to prepare that much for it you you can get some of these questions online or just uh, take the book uh, for students preparing for MBA and uh, you can practice some questions from there. Right. So um, I think we don't have many more questions, any more questions in the chat box. Thank you so, so much, Rupal, for giving us your time. And we hope to keep one more such session with you in future, talking about one of the papers, maybe. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.